Yeah, uh, <coughs> uh, I'm sorry for being late, and I really thank the first speaker. I think she did a very uh, good presentation. And hello, everyone. I'm Wei Kai Li from UCLA. And unfortunately, the elders of the paper cannot come here in person. So as their lab mate, I'm glad to help them present their paper. Causal graph ODE, the continuous treatment effect modeling in multi-agent dynamical systems. So let's start with an example of the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there are a lot of confirmed cases in the United States. And to tackle with this pandemic, the different states, the 50 states, announced many policies, such as wearing a mask, such as uh, you must teach online, and no gatherings and lockdown. And here we want to analyze the influence of these policies to the pandemic. So uh, here we want to uh, predict, we want to model the influence of the COVID-19 policies to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So our task is that we are, we are given a historical data for seven days, uh, such as we know that in the, in the seven days, the confirmed cases in every state, the policy in every state, and for a future period, for uh, such as seven days or 14 days or 21 days, we want to predict the future pandemic cases. And we are, we are provided the policy of the every state in the future uh, period. And we want to predict the confirmed cases of every state in the future period. And here, uh, here we analyze the uh, policy mask and uh, to the uh, pandemic cases. And here we find that for a state which has a high level of COVID-19, uh, they are more likely to announce a mask policy. So based on it, our model might learn that when there is a mask policy, then the, prob the probability of it having a high level of pandemic is 80%. Therefore, this model might learn this false relationship. When it sees in the future data, when it sees that there is a mask policy, it might think that the pandemic will increase, but actually the pandemic will decrease. So this is a severe problem. And uh, now let's dig deeper into this problem. Here, uh, ST means the severity of the pandemic in time step t. And uh, we can see that if it is very uh, severe in time step t, then the state will announce a mass policy, which is AT. And because of this mass policy, the uh, pandemic will decrease in the next time step. And because uh, only the severe states will announce the mass policies, and the non-severe states will not announce the mass policies, so actually, we do not have the data of the mass policy on the non-severe states. So here we only have this kind of data, and it is very easy for the model to make this kind of fast relationship. Actually, we want to break this fast link. We want to observe the data where there is the mass policy in the non-severe states, but it is counterfactual. We cannot uh, observe that data. Therefore, we want to learn um, balanced representation. Here, zt is our latent representation, and we want to uh, make zt to be balanced. Uh, we want to make sure that zt, uh, we cannot predict the max policy from the latent representation zt. Here we use an adversarial training loss, we use this cross entropy loss, and uh, we add a decoder to decode the max policy from zt, and we want to make sure that the latent representation cannot predict the policy. And uh, because the different states are uh, highly connected, then they are influencing each other. So it is very natural that we model this problem as a graph learning problem. Here we have 15 nodes. Each node is a state. And uh, the different states are very closely connected. For example, if there is, uh, the pandemic is very severe in Oregon and at home, then it is highly likely that there are neighborhood states, such as the Washington and California, we also have an increasing uh, pandemic. So here, the nodes are the states, and the links are uh, means the neighborhood relationship between the states, and the weight of the links is the uh, population flow strength between the different states. Uh, here we use a graph neural network. Uh, we have two graph neural networks. First, we have this uh, initial graph neural network, and uh, in this formula, HT means the historical data. So based on the historical data, we first may uh, use a graph neural network to encode it to the initial representation they, they roll. And after that, we use a graph ODE. So uh, I guess that some of them, you might have heard the neural ODE or ODE. So ODE is a function like uh, in the second formula's term, uh, form. It's like that 
uh, we model the uh, relationship between the uh, derivative of a variable and the function of the variable. And here, uh, we use a graph neural network to model this kind of function. So the second formula, it is also a graph neural network. And we want to use this graph neural network to predict the change of state t, which is the derivative of state t. So by training this graph neural network, uh, when we have day zero, then we can predict the change of day zero. And by adding that change, we can get day one. And then by continuing this process, we can get day two, day three, and day four. And as day is the latent representation, we can decode our target, which is the pandemic severity by day. So in this way, we can predict the future trajectory of the pandemic. And before, uh, before we have talked about the balanced uh, representation. And here is another issue, the interference balancing. Uh, interference means that the interference between the neighboring states. And here, as an example, we can see that uh, here is a state, the red state. It, uh, its pandemic is very severe, but it does not announce the vaccine policy. And all of its four neighboring states announced the vaccine policy. And because of its neighbor's vaccine policy, that no vaccine policy uh, states might also decrease the pandemic. And that is due to this neighborhood. And uh, because the neighborhood and very uh, geographically similar states, they might have very uh, similar policies and they might have very similar, uh, they are very similarly politically. So they might have similar policies and this policies effect might overlap and add up. So uh, this kind of interference is also unbalancing. And we, wa uh, we want to also uh, eliminate its influence. And here we define the GIT as the uh, mean of its neighborhoods, uh, neighbor states uh, policies. And we want to make sure that we cannot predict this uh, interference, which is the mean of the neighborhood's policies from the latent representation day and the current state's policy O. And besides the uh, uh, representation balancing and the interference balancing, uh, another key novelty of our paper is the treatment fusing. In previous papers, uh, here the treatment means the policy. Uh, this term is adopted from the clinical uh, area. So in previous papers, uh, they generally they often can just model one kind of policy. But here we have a lot of different policies, such as you must wear a mask, uh, you must have a block down, and like uh, you must online teaching. And this kind, these effects, they are, they're, 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 these policies, their effects can add up. And, but we cannot just uh, directly add their <laughs> effects because uh, there, there might be some uh, complex relationship. So here we use uh, treatment fusing. Uh, first, here we assume that we have k kinds of policies. Uh, first, we encode them into a one-hot encoder, in one-hot encoding. And then we encode them into a, a compact latent representation. And then by using this formula listed here, uh, we want to fuse uh, the k representations to one representation by uh, applying the attention mechanism. So in this way, we can mod uh, simultaneously model the k kinds of policies. So based on our pre previous discussion, uh, here we show our model, the CAGODE. So in this model, uh, the blue line here means that the pandemic tra trajectory. And the blue line before the dashed line is the historical data. The blue line after the dashed line is the future data. We want to make prediction of the future trajectory based on the historical data and the policy of both the historical data and the future data. Here we first have an encoder. And we use the encoder to encode the historical data to the initial representation, day, day zero. And then based on day zero, uh, we use the graph ODE to uh, predict the derivative of the day. And then we can predict the future trajectory. And here, we, as we can see as the two stars here, we can also make some counterfactual uh, analysis. Uh, the, blue, uh, the blue line is the uh, factual uh, trajectory. And the dashed blue lines are the counterfactual trajectories. So in some points, like in the star points, we can uh, implement some policy which is counterfactual. And based on this uh, non-existing policies, we can predict the future uh, pandemic. So we can observe some uh, counterfactual analysis. And based on the counterfactual ana analysis, it can lead uh, guide our policies. 
So uh, in our experiments, we find that our model has shown excellent results. Um, in the previous discussions, we have used COVID-19 as an example. Uh, here we also examined the performance of the model on a tumor growth data set. And uh, our model beats all of the, uh, outperforms all the baselines. And here uh, the, uh, we have uh, tried to predict the future trajectory of 7 days, 14 days, 21 days, or 28 days. And our model has uh, good performance on all of them. Here we also conducted an ablation study. We try to remove some parts of the model, and we find that all the components of the model is very important. And um, as we had uh, said before, that we can make some counterfactual observations. And here we use the counterfactual observation to uh, do some case studies of the COVID-19 policies. And in figure A, here we examine what happened in the three states, New Jersey, Idaho, and mine, after they have removed their existing COVID-19 policies. And we find that if they remove all of their COVID-19 policies, the confirmed cases will start to climb. In figure B, uh, we shift our focus to the timing of the policies against public gatherings. It turned out that the sooner the state announced the policy, uh, the better it controls the pandemic. And it is also very intuitive. And uh, in figure C, we also took a closer look as some of the most common policies, like emergency funding, regulations on care facilities, and bans on public gatherings. We find that removing any of these three policies will lead to a surge in the COVID-19 cases. And lastly, in Figure D, we explore what happens when different policies are announced in different orders. And here we uh, conduct experiments on the two policies, no public gathering and no outside travelers. And we find that uh, it is more beneficial to announce the no public gathering policy early than the uh, and th uh, then it is more effective to announce the no outside traveler. So based on this kind of uh, kind of factual analysis, we can really get our policies. So to sum up, uh, we use the graph ODE to model this problem. Uh, we are using two adversarial last terms to ensure the balancing. And we are also using the treatment fusing to simultaneously model different policies. And we can do some counterfactual observations. That's all for today. Thank you.